uh, this meeting of the Capitola City Council. Um, and just to acknowledge that this is our first meeting back in person since March of 2020. Yeah, let's hear it for that. Yeah. <laughs> Finally feel like we're, we're um, in, uh, out of the woods. And uh, um, it's good to be here. It's good to see all of you here uh, in the audience. Um, and so we'll give the clerk a few minutes to get ready for the roll call. in three different places. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Story. Uh, Councilmember Bertrand appears to be on his way. Councilmember Brown. Present. Councilmember Brooks is not here. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Here. Excellent. And Mayor Story. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now if everyone will join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This time I'll ask if we have any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda. Staff has no changes. And now we'll move on to presentations. Our first presentation um, is an introduction to the Capitola's first hybrid city council meeting. Um, I think the city manager was going to lead us in that. Yes. Thank you all. And thank you, everyone, for being here in person and being here remotely. Um, I just want to take a moment to welcome everyone to our first hybrid meeting. I just want everyone to understand that, as you can see, people are... Uh, running around here frantically to make sure that all the technology is working. So please bear with us and give us a little bit of slack as we try to get this thing going. Um, I will note that we have, I expect another council member to be joining us remotely. You will be able to see the council member remotely up on the screen there and in the audience. In addition, we will be get, accepting public comment from people who are both in the room and people who are on Zoom. Uh, what we will do is we will first go to the people in the room to make public comment. And then if you are participating via Zoom, simply raise your hand or dial star nine if you're calling in, and then we will go to uh, remote testimony. So with that, I'll turn it back to the mayor and we'll get on to our next presentation. Right, uh, thank you. Um, and I just wanna add to that, um, um, you know, it, it really is good. Um, I know we acknowledged it, but I just wanna take this moment to, um, you know, acknowledge the, this, you know, being able to be back in-person meetings. Um, I really feel that this is what democracy is all about, particularly in our community, uh, for people to be able to come in person. And now we have this added technology of, of people who may not be able to attend in person being able to uh, zoom in uh, and participate. So I think it's, it's strengthening our democracy, um, but you know there are gonna be a lot of glitches I anticipate <coughs> on the way and uh, but we will iron them out um, and uh, I look forward to uh, serving in this role um, at this time so thank you for that and now we'll move on to our next presentation which is an introduction to Capitola Community Service staff um, senior planner um, Brian Frolich building inspector to Eric Martin and development services technician um, Jorge Melgoza. Yes, come step right on up. Hi, Katie. Hi, um, Mayor Story and Council. It's a pleasure to be here tonight to introduce new staff members. Um, over the past year, we've um, filled three positions within our department. One was a vacancy during COVID, which was reopened, and then two replacing staff members uh, that moved on. So first, I'd like to take a moment and introduce Brian Freilich, our senior planner. Brian has been with the city for eight months. He joined us last December. Prior to joining, he split his career between the public sector in planning and the private sector as a development project manager. Brian brings a rounded view to projects due to his blend of experiences and can uniquely relate to the applicants 
and understands the real pressures and constraints that they face. Brian was an immediate contributor, having been able to use his public sector experience to assist with daily business and leverage his private sector understanding to bring closure to several large and complex planning projects. Since Brian has joined our team, I've come to truly appreciate his project man management skills and his communication skills. He's already had some great accomplishments in his first eight months with the city, having managed a new hotel project through the process and during the Planning Commission, one added condition of approval. <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. Um, he also acts as a mentor to our associate planner with his years of experience and his understanding of the big picture of planning and the future of Capitola. Brian lives in the Santa Cruz Mountains with his wife and his two school-aged children, and he often um, reflects on that he's commuting to the right side of the mountain. So it's a pleasure to have Brian with us. Welcome, Brian. Well, thank you. Uh, that was a very nice intro, Katie. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and honorable council members. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. This is a great move for me in my career. Um, just to build a little bit on kind of the back and forth I've had in my career, uh, I think it, it allows me to, I've experienced the, the regulatory process and on both sides and I, I think I really can relate to applicants and uh, try to demystify what can be a confusing process, anticipate uh, next steps, and that's, that both helps an applicant and the interested public. So I think I can map out those processes and hopefully uh, leverage that forward with great service to uh, the community and better outcomes. Uh, and uh, less problems associated with development projects. I'd like to uh, also thank Jamie and uh, especially Katie for the opportunity to work for Capitola. Thanks. Well, welcome, Brian. Uh, welcome on behalf of the residents and the city council. Um, we feel very fortunate to have you here. Um, that sounds like quite a coup to me to approve a hotel project with only one condition. I think that may establish a new record. Um, so thank you for your work over the past eight months, and, uh, um, and we look forward to having um, years of service for the residents of Capitola. So, yeah, thank welcome. You. Okay, ne next I'd like to introduce George Malgoza. He's our development service technician. Um, George has been with the city for nine months. They actually, they, they both joined our team within two weeks of one another. So. Uh, so he started in November of last year. He works as the community development service tech, so he's got a focus on keeping our building department operating smoothly and getting plans routed throughout the city and everything organized, as well as administering our affordable housing program, which is not an easy task. So I've been working really closely with George uh, since he's arrived, and he's also been getting training from Carolyn Flynn. Um, George is a local to the area, having lived in Watsonville the majority of his life. Uh, George went to Carrillo College and then on to CSUMB where he majored in marine science. One of his favorite assignments was working with the White Sharks at Hopkins Marine Station. After graduating, he went on to work as an operations analyst for Granite Rock. Um, George is extremely organized and really has uh, brought our our building department to a new level, very customer friendly, customer or um, oriented and just a pleasure for the public to work with. Um, George enjoys learning new things. He's currently enrolled at Cabrillo in their blueprint reading class, which starts next week. Um, and he enjoys sports and staying active. His, t uh, his two young children are the focus of his life. And we really appreciate, since George has uh, joined our team, he's made a new tradition for us of going out to lunch once a week. So all team members that are available on either Thursday or Friday go out and have a nice lunch. So really a team builder and it's a pleasure working with George. Yeah. Hi, well, hi, hi George. George. Thank you, council members. Thank you, everyone here. Um, thank you for the opportunity, Katie. Um, and, you know, great to be here. Um, I love the ocean, so great place to work next to the ocean, especially the people here, are very friendly, very helpful, and just great and happy to be here. Great. Well, George, um, uh, let me welcome you. And first, I want to apologize because mm -hmm. when I announced this, I said your first name wrong. So no, um, it's think either what? one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, you prefer George? Yeah. 
Yeah? yeah. Okay. Well, um, welcome. Um, we feel you sound like you have an extensive and diverse background. So I think that um, uh, we are fortunate here uh, to be able to have your services. And it sounds like you're a great team builder in getting everyone out to lunch <laughs> at least once a week. Um, so welcome and look forward to working with you uh, on affordable housing in Capitola. Um, and um, that, that's not going to be an easy task, um, but um, we look forward to working with you. And I wonder if um, do other council members have any comments uh, for Brian and George? or Just welcome to both of you. We're really excited to have you here. Yeah, Thank and you. I don't want to forget the um, council members on Zoom. Um, so. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to second that. Uh, thank you guys for joining us, and and welcome to the team. Yeah, great. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. Next. Um, well, So this next presentation, uh, Brandon Napoli it will be on the Zoom, so I'm hoping his image will come up. He's joining. He's joining, okay. Do you want to tell us so more about Brandon yeah. while we're waiting? Um, I, I can start, oh, here, here he comes, so. Okay, I will jump in. Welcome, Brandon. <laughs> um, so for this next recognition, I need to tell a short story. Um, it was likely in May of 2020, I remember Jamie approaching me and saying, Katie, I casually said, Katie, I think we have a new funding opportunity. And we've, we were all ready to give back to our community. It was right after the pandemic started in any way we could help. He said, uh, if you could look into this for me, it's gonna come through the state, something to do with CDBG. And from there, the term CDBG became secondhand to all of city staff and our city council. Um, during the first round of funding, the desire of our city council was to do something for our local businesses, as many of them were sh shuttered. Um, and as we did our homework and asked endless questions of Paul Ashby, our CDBG consultant, we realized that we needed to take more time because the economic development grants through CDBG are extremely complicated and we really needed to have a team in place in order to administer money and funding out to the businesses. So we knew there'd be a second round and when it came through, I started looking for partners. I reached out to banks, I reached out to different nonprofits, um, everyone was interested in partnering with us, but there were just, uh, everyone was extremely busy and it was a very confusing time for all of us. And I remember uh, reaching out to Brandon and telling him what I was up to. And I was pretty nervous because I'd, I'd asked a few people at this point. And in his um, very casual way, he responded something along the lines of, sure. Yeah, we, SBDC, that's what we do. We help businesses and we would love to help the city of Capitola small businesses. So I started breathing after that and <laughs> we, I knew this is a great partner. Um, and from there we kicked off um, something that we thought would maybe be a three to six month relationship. And I think it was a year later that we actually like closed up all the, uh, getting all the grants out there and funding the different businesses. So Brandon Napoli and his team spent countless hours assisting our Capitola businesses, at first with their grant applications. Once the application deadline was closed, the SBDC then reviewed all the applications and we had to make certain findings um, that meet the federal uh, regulations related to low income and um, just meeting a lot of criteria through the federal standards for CDBG. In the end, I think they reviewed somewhere between like 35 to 40 different applications and only 10 qualified. We ended up doubling the funding. We were originally going to give 7,500 to each uh, business. The money was doubled to 15,000 per business. 
And I can say very honestly, this never would have gotten done without Brandon and his team. So I'll forever be thankful for all the work and dedication and time they put into this. So Brandon, with that, um, I have an, a, a certificate of appreciation for you today. And I just want to thank you for all of your hard work and dedication and your staff's dedication as well. Thank you. Go ahead, Brandon. Did you well, want to say a few words? Sure. I'll, I'll say a couple words. Uh, first, I'm honored. Um, this is um, this is what we do. We help small businesses and we partner with cities. Uh, the last couple of years of pandemic were extraordinarily difficult for businesses. And the real difference was whether they felt supported locally or not. And the city of Capitola really stepped up to make sure that their businesses felt supported locally. And I have to say that makes a world of a difference to know that their city supports them. And so it's been a, a joy to be partnered with the city and to work together on this grant program and to continue to work together to make sure the businesses are served well. Um, they are really the unsung heroes of the community and what makes Capitola a destination beyond a beach. Um, is those unique businesses that are there. So very thankful and um, looking forward to working in the future together. Right. Thank you, Brandon. And let me just add my thanks uh, for your work. Um, I know the CDBG uh, process and application uh, is very difficult uh, and complicated, time-consuming process. Um, I think we're fortunate to have uh, uh, somebody who has the expertise to marshal that through for us successfully um, and to, you know, really uh, allow us uh, to help our small businesses during the periods, during the pandemic, when we were shut down and they were shut down. Um, and um, I know it, it was um, um, pretty, um, you know, uh, scary there for a while, uh, whether or not um, um, all of them were going to be able to survive. Um, so thank you for your assistance with that. Um, and thank you, Katie and staff, uh, for bringing that to us um, and, um, you know, and, and allowing us to be in that position of, of helping our small business partners in Capitola. Thank you. And a, a member of Brandon's staff is here. I'm not sure if he, he's aware of that through the Zoom. So just, you know, um, so Alexander Peterson is here, and he, he, he worked on that this tirelessly as well. So thank you. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Alexander, and thank you for being here. Um, so um, I believe that concludes our presentations, and it looks like uh, Council Member Bertrand has joined us from, um, from virtual to in person. So welcome. I'll comment uh, on that later. And, uh, <laughs> Um, and so now um, I'll ask whether we have any additional materials for tonight's meeting. No, Mayor, there are none. There are none. So now we'll move on to oral communications. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the City Council on items that are either not on tonight's agenda or maybe on tonight's consent agenda. Um, and um, if, do we have copies of the agenda for? the public or um it looks like something that we need to add for the next meeting yeah um so i, I realize if you don't have the agenda you may not know what's on the consent um <coughs> list um, um but uh if um maybe i'll, I'll uh, after this I'll, I'll maybe um read through them if any members of the public wants to comment on them um Maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, and the consent agenda items are A, to consider the minutes on the July 28th meeting, um, B, consider an update to the accountant one, accountant two, and senior accountant job descriptions, uh, C, consider the purchase of new mobile computers for the police department, uh, D, the Overstreet banner policy update, those are the banners that are on Monterey um, and on Capitola Avenue, 
E, appeal of the design permit, historic alteration permit, variance and coastal development permit to demolish an existing residence and construct a new home that retains nonconformities for size and setbacks of 1410 Prospect Avenue. Um, and I believe the recommendation is that matter is coming to us on September the 22nd. Um, and F, receive an update on pandemic response and consider adopting proposed resolutions allowing for the continuation of telecomforting, uh, conferencing, uh, excuse me. Um, so those are the consent items. And so now I'll ask um, do members of the public wish to speak on any of those or items that are not on tonight's agenda. There we go. Come right up. Good evening. Um, first, I just wanted to come up and just say thank you for um, bringing back the in-person meetings. Um, I hope that these will continue, and it would be lovely to see all five of you up there present, which I think would be wonderful if, if it works out. Um, I do think that the idea of still tele um, televising or offering them um, you know, Zoom or Hangout or whatever virtual method, I do think that that's really important because not everybody can always attend every meeting in person. But um, I do think it's really important that we bring back the idea of the in-person meetings and, and try to stick with that. I think a lot of folks, as wonderful as the technology is, it's, it's a drag. <laughs> I think we're all, we all have a little bit of um, Zoom fatigue in one way or another. And I do think it's a great way for everybody to mingle in the audience and you know, see their neighbors and members of the community um, in a face-to-face -face manner that I think we've just been lacking through the whole, the whole idea of the pandemic and the ongoing endemic and the ongoing, just, you know, the ongoing, right? So um, it's nice to be able to bring this back and I think have a little bit of um, normalcy and to interact with your peers and, you know, to be able to have your voices heard, um, you know, not, am I on mute? Can you see me? <laughs> you know, and again, I think it's great to have the option, but I'd really like to see this continue um, and be brought back with on a more permanent basis. So thank you. It's nice to see you all. All right. Well, thank you so much for that acknowledgement and encouragement. And so, yes, please come on up. Congratulations also from those of us who have come for the first time to be in, in with all of you in this room. My name is Judith Paraki. I live at 101 Livermore with my husband here in Capitola. We've been part of owners since of this city since 1983, although our extended family started interfacing with this wonderful place in the 30s, began purchasing in the 50s go forward to the 80s and 90s and into the 2000s. We have several homes within the Capitola footprint. Uh, we uh, have become aware of your proposal potentially of a vacant home uh, tax. And so it is for that reason I'd like to address the council. Uh, we uh, have taken the time to look at several measures throughout the state and Vancouver so we realize that they're all over the map as far as what the intent is. Reading the information that I found online for Capitola, I found, I, I didn't find a lot of answers. So I guess that's why we're here with questions. Um, we're not blessed to live here full time like you all are, but we are here quite often. So these are the, these are the questions that we have. Uh, how are the vacant homes to be selected? What is considered a vacant home uh, on the online and what constitutes vacancy? Uh, I, the data that I read on, online with you guys was 90 days was considered a residency or maybe 100 days, 120 days was considered a residency. It, it was just simply unclear. Uh, the other thing was I didn't see an end game. If, if in fact this initiative goes forward and should you reach the 66% threshold and it passes, where's the money gonna go? You know, what, what, what's the rationale behind it? Where's the money gonna go 
Uh, what's the purpose? Where is it going to be spent? How is it going to be governed? Are you going to have a body that governs it? Do you have a sunset clause to this initiative? Most initiatives have sunset clauses. We didn't see any of that. I realize we're early and perhaps you're not going on the ballot in November. Maybe you are or maybe you're going in 24. We really don't know these things because it was unclear to us. But uh, these were simply questions that we have. So there you go. We hope uh, housing, we realize, is an issue, and we certainly are, are very excited about what's going on at the mall and a mixed-use thing that y'all are coming up with, and, you know, congratulations to that. Um, you know, so, anyway, that was it. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on uh, public comment? Um, I'll I'll go now to Zoom. Do we have anyone on Zoom that would like to speak on public comment? So I'm looking and I don't see anyone with their hand raised. Now's your chance. Zoomers. <laughs> don't give me spell me, I swear. Okay. Oh, I see one person. I'm going to unmute you and you'll have three minutes to speak. Okay? working on it and you should be able to speak I'm allowing them to speak, but I'm, they're not unmuting. So, um, Nicole, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. Oh, she's talking. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. We can hear you now. Hi. Um, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, we were, we had gotten a notice uh, regarding the APN 03418114, the 1610 Bald Avenue proposal. Um, and it was listed that August 25th would be, that it was going to be addressed at tonight's council meeting. I guess we just it's want to know to what. Sir. If it's been obviously it wasn't on the agenda tonight, but we did receive a notice. If uh, when it will be discussed at a future council meeting. Yes, Katie, do you have uh, any information about sixteen ten bulb? Yes, originally. Um, Are you speaking? Sorry, this is Katie Hurley, the Community Development Director. Um, the applicant asked for that to be continued at the last Planning Commission meeting, and so we didn't put it on the City Council agenda either. So we did put up new noticing on site saying that this would be continued. So sorry for the inconvenience. It will not be heard tonight, and new noticing will go out before that is heard, so you'll get a new notice in the mail, and the site will be noticed as well. We're anticipating okay. October. Okay, great. Good. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for calling in. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do we have anyone else on, on Zoom? No. Uh, no, one, no one else has their hand up. Thank you. Yes. Um, so that can, I'm going to close the uh, public comment portions of the meeting, uh, but I did want to address the question concerning the vacant home tax and just let you know that um, recently the council uh, decided to table that matter uh, and not proceed um, at the uh, upcoming November election. Um, and, um, and, you know, the council will be turning over. And so, um, you, know, I, you know, who knows where that matter may go um, after uh, the new year. But at this point, um, it is tabled um, and it is not being studied at this time. <clears throat> So, and thank you for coming in and speaking on it. Um, 
So that will conclude the um, oral communications, and now we'll go to uh, staff and city council comments. Uh, we'll start with staff comments. I think this evening, more than anything, just looking to have a successful first hybrid meeting. Um, I will also note that, you know, I, I don't know that I've talked to the council about this before or the community at large, but, you know, the, the great resignation has come to Capitola. Um, you know, we've had a lot of staff turnover here in the last couple of years. It's been sort of a challenging time. And so for anybody who is trying to figure out who they should be interfacing with, either from the public um, or, or with uh, the council, uh, just please bear with us as we kind of people take on new roles. Uh, for example, I think you may know that our city clerk has recently taken on a new role. This is going to be one of the last meetings that she's doing this job, and she's going to be doing another important job as the assistant to the city manager coming up shortly. So a lot of changes, uh, and everyone should appreciate everyone's patience. Okay. Congratulations, Chloe. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate that. Um, so now we'll move on to city council comments and um, I'll uh, ask city council members who are in the room whether they have any comments first. I no. I'll go ahead, Jack. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm sorry for being late to the meeting. I wasn't late as you know, I was logged on remotely, but um, I found out my computer does not work very well recently. So that being aside, and um, so an issue came up a little while ago that uh, had me thinking about the basis of how this city works. Um, when I first became a city council member, I talked a lot about the fact that this is a democracy and everything zeroes in on the city council when it comes to certain kinds of decisions, anything especially dealing with policy. So I just want to reiterate that when things come to the city council that are controversial, and I'm not going to mention the subject, but I believe there's someone in the remote audience listening, so I'm speaking to that person and others of this particular issue. City Council makes that decision. And that's the way it works in democracy. And if it is a controversial decision, I, I'm sure that at that time, City Council will probably come up a way to figure out an alternate way to have public input, especially if it's very controversial and meets a lot of attention of the public. So that being said, that's our purpose. That's why we're elected and we take that uh, role very seriously. Um, the other thing is the last city council, someone came to uh, us remotely and talked about a proposal in Monterey Park, which is right across the street from me. Uh, Kristen has involved herself in that, and I as well. I've talked to my neighbors about this, and I've talked to the person who made the proposal. I've talked to the mayor about this, and also city staff. Um, I think the issue that was brought up, which is to entertain the idea of having a small part of, of Monterey Park at a certain time of the day set aside for dogs to run around freely. Um, it's an issue fraught with many difficulties, but I think it should come to City Council for consideration, so I'd like to ask for it to be agendized. Okay. That's, it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, Council Member. Brown. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Councilmember Bertrand beat beat me uh, to it, or for the. No, the... we're together on this, I think. Well, I, I met with the um, interested parties, and I believe you met with the interested parties, uh, but we haven't spoken about it. But I think you know you you just asked for the agenda item that I was going to ask for, so that's good to hear. Um, and then other than that, I'm just I'm happy to be back in chambers with my fellow council members and staff, and really just want to take a moment to uh, say thank you so much to staff for all that they've done for these last two years to make sure that we kept everything running smoothly during the pandemic, and all that you're doing now to to keep us running smoothly in a new way. Uh, in the endemic, I guess you could call it. So that's all. Don't ask me. Ask Sam. Yeah, well, I'm asking Sam. <laughs> yeah. He's looking at you, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I, if, if you're, if, I'm, if I'm you're, done. You're yes. done? Yes, okay. thank you. Yeah, go ahead, John. Uh, so I'd like to make another comment. I, I do follow a protocol, and I am polite to my regular city council members. Um, there's a thing called the Brown Rule, and I knew that... Um, she has already talked to people involved in this, and uh, I cannot talk there because I talked with Sam already on the issue about two weeks, maybe three weeks ago. I can't remember right now. So I'm precluded from talking with uh, Kristen and Ms. Brown on this issue. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, anything else? Okay. Um, did council members on Zoom um, have any uh, comments? 
no comments uh, on Zoom. Um, um, I just have one comment. Uh, I would also like to add, ask that we add to our next agenda a um, presentation from Santa Cruz City Schools uh, concerning their bond measures L and K. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe if staff could reach out to uh, uh, Chris Monroe um, and let them know um, and to give us a presentation for the council's consideration um, at that time. And um, there being no other uh, council comments, we'll now move on to the consent items, um, which I had um, uh, mentioned uh, previously. Um, so before we do that, I'll ask whether any council members wish to uh, pull a consent item for further discussion. Seeing none from the room, um, yeah, and um, seeing none, though, I, I, I do uh, would like to pull item D, which is the over the street banner policy update. Um, and um, it's, yeah, it, it's not just a simple question, so I think I'm going to move it to uh, general government business. Um, and I'll ask, uh, was, is there anyone here that wanted to speak to our, I guess, or speak on that item? Um, and do we have anyone on Zoom that wants? So I'm going to move that item to the end of the agenda then. Um, so it will be item G. With that, I'll entertain a motion to um, approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. So there's a motion by Council Member Round, seconded by uh, Council Member Bertrand. Uh, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Thank you. Mayor Story. Aye. Thank you. So that motion passes unanimously. We'll now go on to general government public hearings for this evening. Uh, the first item is 8A, um, and that item is to appoint a representatives to the Historical Museum Board. The recommended action is to appoint two representatives to the Historical Museum Board. Can we have a staff report, please? Hi, thank you, Mayor Story. Give me one second um, to share my slides. The correct slides on this big, okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. It's nice to see you all in person and on the big screen. Uh, this will be a quick item. We're doing the Historical Museum Board appointments. Uh, there was an extended recruitment that ended on June 23rd. We received three applications from the people listed here, uh, John Compton, Mary Hay, and John Mulry. There is a full term vacancy and one partial term vacancy currently, so there's two seats that we're looking to fill. The board, the Historical Museum Board, did recommend uh, to appoint Mary Hay to that full term and John Mulry to the term that ends in June 2024. And uh, they did note that John Compton um, was given information on how to volunteer with the museum. And tonight, your action is, excuse me, this isn't moving forward. It's fairly simple. It is to appoint members to the Historical Museum Board. Just a reminder, so there's two seats and there were the three applicants. So I will wait for your determination. Thank you. Thank you, Chloe. Absolutely. Um, are there questions from council members at this time? I have some questions. Yeah. Um, is the museum board one of our boards and commissions that are required to uh, sign and follow the code of conduct that the council, I know council and planning commission does the board as well? All, yes, all of our boards and commissions do. Okay. And does the board, um, the museum, it's been a long time since I was on the museum board, do they have um, essentially unmitigated authorization to change their board members at any time regardless of their reason do they have the op do they have the rights to determine if a board member is, continues to be a good fit at any given time the city council has that authority 
but the board doesn't. The board, the I, I guess what I'm saying is if the museum board members themselves determine that a trustee is, is not a good fit after appointment, do they have the right to remove them or does it have to come back to council? It would have to come back to council. It would, okay, so they would have to request it. Correct. Us. Okay. okay, those are my questions. Linda, thank you. Um, Chuck, you had no questions? No, I do not. Okay, um, I believe council member, uh, excuse me, uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser, uh, has their hand up on Zoom? Yeah, thank you. I was just wondering if there's um, sort of a, are we on a time crunch as far as appointing people for the board? I know there's been some, we have not a ton of um, applicants, so I'm just wondering if we're running out of time, if there is a deadline, or if this is something that maybe could come back at a later date. Sure. Hi, Councilor Vice Mayor Kaiser. Uh, there's actually no legal requirement for you for the council to fill this position tonight. Um, if there is interest on the council, we could um, ask staff to continue to advertise the position and, and bring back whatever further applications we receive um, at a later date. Great. Thank you so much. Did uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser? Is that you was that the end of your questions on the report? It is. Thank okay. You. Yeah. That's Thank you. Just just making sure. Um, so with that, um, I'll see if there's any members of the public that would like to address the council on this item. Um, seeing none, um, I'll ask. Um, do we have any members or anyone on Zoom that would like to speak to the council on this item? On this item. Okay. Well, I'll bring it back to council for further deliberation and possible action. Who would like to begin? Council Member Bertrand? Yes. Um, usually we support the nominations of the Stark Board, and um, I am disposed to do the same. Um, I did talk to uh, a fellow council person about this and also I talked to a member, current member of the board, uh, one that I've known for quite some time and has been a very um, heavily volunteering person in Capitola and I respect his opinion quite a bit. So um, I had some insight in terms of the re uh, interviews and some insight in terms of how that went and uh, based on that, um, I'm just, I would like to uh, agree with this nomination and move that we accept what the historic board has recommended to us. Um, Mary Hay, I know very well. Um, she's been very involved for a long time. Uh, John, I do not, but uh, he seemed to come off in the interview fairly well, um, has a lot of energy, wants to um, uh, recruit younger people, which is something that I think the museum board could use. So all in all, I, this is the reason why I support this nomination. Okay, so that's a motion by yes, Council Member Bertrand to uh, accept the staff recommendation. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second to the motion by uh, Council Member Brown. Um, and um, I'll call for roll call vote. Can I make uh, quick comments on this item before? Certainly, we Thank yes, you, you may. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard really good things about Mary. I think she's going to be a fantastic board member, um, and I put my faith in the museum board, having formerly been a trustee, in making the best decisions for their board. That's all I have to say. Thank you. All right, thank you. With that, I'll call for a roll call vote. Council member. Oh, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Oh, uh, excuse me. Thank you. Um, yeah, Vice Mayor uh, Kaiser. Thanks. Yeah, no, I just had a quick comment um, before uh, roll call. Just um, I I appreciate the, the museum board going forward with these um, interviews, and I know it can be a grueling process, and it's hard when um, the pool isn't as large as we'd like to pull from. So I just want um, those being appointed to be mindful of our code of conduct for the city and to keep the city um, in their best interest and. Thank you guys for all the hard work that you do. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. 
So we'll go ahead with roll call vote then. Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. And Mayor Story. Aye. The motion passes unanimously, which will bring us now to um, item 8B. This is to consider a resolution accepting the grant in the amount of $19,304.88 from the Department of Alcohol Beverage Control Alcohol Policing Partnership Program and to authorize the police chief to execute the grant agreement and authorizing the finance director to amend the 2022-23 fiscal year city budget by $19,304.88. Hello. Hi. Hello, Chief. You got, yes. You, you gonna give us the staff report on this? I'm just. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say thank you for uh, welcome to see, welcome to see everyone. Thank you for uh, for your time this evening, Mayor Council. It's a it's an honor to be back in person. We really appreciate that. So with that, you're gonna uh, uh, Captain Ryan's gonna do a PowerPoint presentation to talk about an ABC uh, grant opportunity that we have um, in front of us. So I just want to say hello to everyone, and I'm gonna pass it over to Captain Ryan real, real quick. All right, great. Thank you. Upper left. Oh, here? Upper left. Upper left. Uh, oh, left. Okay, got it. Stop. Like that. Dial. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. Sorry. Everyone left in the audience. Um, good evening, Mayor Story, council members, and staff. Um, thanks for letting me present this to you and, and for taking an interest in um, this endeavor that we want to take on. So um, some several months ago, uh, we put in for this Alcohol Policing Partnership Grant. And um, let me, sorry, I'm trying to change my... And the, the sorry, technical difficulties. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. So the uh, the the background of this grant, we've we've had it in the past, um, in 2019 and 2020. We submit to ABC that we have a need for this grant to address alcohol-related crimes and to keep our um, alcohol establishments in compliance with ABC and to be good partners throughout the city. We applied for this grant again for 2022 to 2023. It's in the amount, as you can see up there, of $19,305 and some change. The objective of the grant is to um, educate and improve compliance and, and really to address underage alcohol violations. We partner with ABC, um, provide them with a schedule. They come down and they work with us. We have a supervisor assigned and several officers to um, go out and do education. The way this happens is, as you can see, there's uh, the bullet points there are the the stipulations of the grant we have to meet these various stipulations um it i could definitely explain them further offline if you had a lot of questions about them but we address on sale minor decoy operations so selling alcohol to minor minors um, in a restaurant bar establishment off sale which would include liquor stores and grocery stores shoulder tap operations that's pretty self-explanatory when juveniles are asking adults to buy them alcohol then we do in impact in, um, operations where we go in and we make sure that um, the places is alcohol selling establishments are not doing any improper advertising they're it's clean they're operating within abc standards um, and then we do training lead training with the establishment so that they get they can offer training to their employees for further compliance because that's the overall objective is to have compliance and then party patrol this was a new one that hasn't been in the past but going out and um, when we for example holiday season young people are home from college maybe underage drinking is happening so just 
being mindful and aware and doing a lot of education and outreach through through um, that in that way. Um, so my recommendation tonight, our recommendation is uh, asking the city council to adopt this resolution of $19,304.88 19, to be exact um, and authorizing the police chief to execute this grant in, in our agreement with ABC so we can move forward um, with our planned operations. Do you have any questions? I don't, but uh, council members may. Okay. Yes. I always seem to have questions. Um, maybe my blind, my mind blinked a bit. Lead training. What's that? It. Uh, you know, I should have been prepared for that entire acronym. Yep. But uh, it it is basically what it is is it's a four hour training we offer to the staff. In fact, you'd be happy to know that a lot of our restaurants and bars historically have taken advantage of it. We open up the community room, bring a member in from ABC and they go over um, uh, false IDs, mm -hmm. what the regulations are around over serving. They talk about help to develop people's skill set in cutting people off, partnering with the police department to make sure that we're not over serving people. Um, and so that's essentially what it is. And they come in and they th we, we offer the space and do the outreach to our businesses, but ABC will come and do the training. Okay. And I think you do this in conjunction, not the lead training, but the TAP program and other things with uh, the Explorers Group, correct? We do. Can you explain what the Explorers Group is to the public? What the Explorer Group is? Yeah. It is, those are minors who are historically interested in law enforcement or the criminal justice world in general, and they're wanting to explore that, Explorers. And so we actually bring them in through an interview process and do a background with them and start to bring them in if it's a good fit. Um, and they will often partner with us to then do the minor decoy operations. We also have a partnership with the Watsonville Cadet Program. They have a very thriving cadet program. They call them cadets, we call them explorers, but they're essentially the same. Um, we're, and they're very skilled at coming and doing these operations with ABC as well. So I asked that question for a single purpose. Um, we do have a very active Explorers program, and I've noted that several people in that Explorers program have gone on in career policing. And I think what Capitol is doing is very good in that regard. It offers a chance for youth to learn what this career path could afford them, you know, as they grow older and want a career and stuff like that. So I think it's a good thing we're participating in. Um, the next question is, uh, when my daughter was at Rebbe Elementary in the school system here, she loved it when the police came in and talked about various issues. Do you have a program, I guess it's probably appropriate for New Brighton to explain the issues about drinking, underage drinking and the issues involved? We, we do. We, we do outreach and partnership with New Brighton, uh, middle school in particular. However, it would be an aside to this grant. Okay, That's not the purpose of the grant. The grant is really to partner with the businesses and licensees. Okay, I did not know, now I know. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay. The question is from other council members. Yeah, Vice Mayor Kaiser, any questions? Okay, seeing no other questions, does any member of the public wish to address the council on this item? Seeing none, um, do we have anyone on Zoom that would like to address the council on this item? raised okay I'll bring it back to the council um, and I just want to uh, Captain Ryan um, just congratulations and chief um, on um, bringing this uh, grant um, a source uh, to us uh, to you know to work with the uh, businesses uh, to steer uh, minors away uh, from drinking uh, and really you know I think going down a bad path and to you know, kind of intercept them and help them, uh, you know, when they're young, we'll put them on the right track. And so uh, congratulations again uh, for bringing this to us and, and our opportunity to vote on it and hopefully pass it, so. Can I just add one comment too that I forgot to yes. mention? I think it would be important to mention that um, in managing this grant, the, um, the fact that we have our records analyst position 
again. It's she and I attended the conference to um, it was a re it was a requirement as um, recipients of the grant, mm -hmm. and um, so I'm really excited about having that partnership to hold up to keep us accountable and to be that conduit between ourselves and ABC. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, with that, I'll bring it back to the council for any f well f any further comments or discussions or uh, a potential vote on the item. I'll move approval of the recommended action. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion by Councilmember Brown, seconded by Councilmember Bertrand, to approve uh, the staff recommendation, um, and I'll call for a roll call vote. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. That motion passes unanimously, which brings us to item C, which is the Community Grant Subcommittee. And this item, the recommended action is to appoint two council members to a subcommittee to review applications for the 2022-23 Community Grant Program. Um, and before we uh, uh, get into the staff report on this item. Um, I did, uh, I'm gonna recuse myself um, and disclose that, uh, you know, my wife works for the Community Action Board, which is a nonprofit which has uh, been an applicant to the Community Grants Program. So for that reason, I'm gonna recuse myself and I'm gonna ask Vice Mayor Kaiser if she'll run this uh, uh, item on the agenda. Thank you. Vice Mayor Kaiser, I think I need to note as well that I, uh, it's been determined that I am not required to recuse, but I would like to note that I'm a non-compensated board member of the Community Action Board of Santa Cruz County, um, which is involved in this community grants program. So I just wanted to make uh, that statement before we get started as well. Great, thank you for informing. And Jamie, is this you? This is, give me a second here to share my screen. All right, so Vice Mayor, Council Members, this item is before you today to consider forming a subcommittee to review the community grant applications for the upcoming community grant cycle. You will, will, will recall that during the budget this year we appropriated $125,000 for general fund community grants as well as $61,000 in our dedicated youth and early childhood education program. That does come in addition to the CDBG funding that the city is providing to uh, a number of other uh, nonprofits in our community. The application period closed on August 15th and we got 23 applications. Uh, you will recall that this will be the first year of us implementing uh, the program after some recent program changes that the city council made, included shifting to a three-year grant cycle and establishing specific funding categories for which the grant recipients would be applying for and then establishing different grant types, both sort of more administrative grants and more project-oriented grants. So with that, uh, I will also remind council that uh, two members uh, do have conflicts associated with one of the nonprofits who have applied. Um, Mayor Story is obviously recused and council member Brooks uh, also has a conflict. So a recommendation this evening would be to appoint two council members to a subcommittee to review the applications we received and then ultimately make a recommendation to the full council regarding community grant uh, recipients for the next cycle. And with that, I'm available for questions. Thank you. Does any council have questions? Vice Mayor I have a question. So my question thank you. Uh, my question is of staff, and so when would the report have to be done and presented to the city council? So we don't have a firm deadline. Um, my goal would be to get it done in the next, let's just say, two to three weeks, and then be able to bring it to the second meeting in, that would be September, um, but it certainly could go to the first meeting in October if necessary. Okay, because I do term out in November, I mean December, and I want it to be a part of this, but if it was going to extend into you know the rest of the year, I could not be on it. Yeah, the award will certainly take place during your term. Uh, I will note that it is a three-year grant cycle, so the awards will take place both this fiscal year and then presumably for the next two beyond. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, any 
anybody there in the room? Anyone wish to address the council on this item? You have no comments in the room. And no one has Wait, their hand please. raised, Vice Mayor K Kaiser. Anybody on Zoom? I might have missed the last part. That's what we said. That's what we said. No one with their hand raised on Zoom. Thank you, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. So we can go back to deliberation or count um, any council comments as far as the committee. Yeah, I have I have some comments if I might, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, this is something that I've um, been uh, involved in and, and interested in in regard to our community grant and, and changing the way our community grant program um, is run and determining who gets uh, funding and how and, and it's something that um, uh, Councilwoman Brooks and I were a part of in terms of kind of looking at the way that we want to do this differently that we have in the past. So I'd like to um, continue um, to be a part of this on this new subcommittee and um, I, I would ask if you are interested with you becoming our mayor next year I think it would be um, an exciting opportunity for you to also be a part of um, looking at this new process um, of our community grant so I would certainly be interested in being a part of it um, and my I don't know if it'd be an ask or a suggestion uh, would would also uh, to be to recommend uh, that you also join, if, if I may be so bold. Yeah, sure. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, Jacques and I were on the subcommittee um, last go around, and I think, um, you know, we sort of spent quite a bit of time thinking of a way to go about um, monetary amounts and or raises or whatnot or new people applying and work with Jamie and Jim and stuff and I think um, when we ended up bringing it back to council it got a little muddied and so I'm hoping that um, in this next term we could maybe figure out a way where the effort that's being put in is, is being brought back to the council and is actually looked at as the way to go um, and I'm super stoked and happy to work with you on this for sure I just want to make sure we're putting in the work and then not getting it completely roundhouse and not not effective if, if we're gonna spend time on it you know what I mean yeah that's understandable cool. okay well I'll make a comment yeah yeah um, so that may be a good combination, you since you and I worked on the last one, and um, Kristen has some ideas that uh, she would like to go forward with, and being that I won't be on the council for the next two or three years. <laughs> so um, I agree with that. I think that would be great. Thank you. And uh, she's wonderful to work with. So far, so good, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay. So I'll move that uh, we accept... Uh, Kristen, okay, and Mar Margo. I don't know if we have to make a motion to do that, but if that's the case, that's my motion. You don't need to make a motion. Oh, okay. okay. Did not know, okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah, so Councilwoman Pearson and I will be on the subcommittee for the community program. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. And I think if that's all we need, then we can have Mayor Story come back. Sounds good. No. <laughs> oh, coming in the <laughs> other door. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> Should I close the door quickly? <laughs> I was saying earlier we need hold music for these pause like God. Odd pauses we do the awkward pauses some background tunes <laughs> that will not yeah. increase elevator participation tunes. elevator music yeah <laughs> so thank you uh vice mayor kaiser for taking that on um um so 
We'll go on to the next item, which is uh, to consider the hybrid meeting administrative policy. Um, the recommended action is to review draft policy and provide feedback. So, city manager, is that, oh. Hi, yes, it's me again. One second um, here. Sorry, I'm going to try that. That's fine. Chloe, you, before Mayor. you get started, do you want to maybe move your mic a little bit closer to make sure? Uh, can you, is that better? You know, I think Larry turned my mic off. Because <laughs> I'm too loud. What about this one? That is much better. Okay. <laughs> Uh, my typing is much too aggressive. <laughs> One moment, because my slides I know don't look quite right, but you can all hear me better. And one more step here. Okay. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. It was correct. Okay. Thank you, Mayor uh, and Council. I'll just keep this brief. and. Um, Keep in mind, this is our first hybrid meeting, so this item is very um, timely. Last meeting, uh, on July 28th, you gave direction on the content to include in an administrative policy. That draft was included in the agenda packet, so I'm hoping you had time to review it. Um, as you'll know, you determined that for council attendance, you wanted to see um, at least one, but not more than three, council members in person at our meetings here, and that the members should self-determine who was going to attend in which capacity. And um, also recommended a standing agenda item to close out the night for council to, to determine and to communicate to staff who would be attending virtually and who would be attending in person. And then the other recommendations we received were to include COVID precautions in that policy. Uh, you'll notice we did block off every other row here. We have um, masks recommended, and the community room is also open as kind of an overflow room, along with some air filters and the doors being open to promote some safety here. So that was all included in the draft policy. Uh, really, your recommendation now is to kind of, having gone through a meeting now, give it some thought and provide us feedback on the draft policy and on if there's any other additions or any corrections you'd, you've seen you'd like us to know. And the idea being um, either the same draft or an amended draft will come back for your adoption on consent at the next meeting on September 8th. So that's really my presentation and I'm curious what your thoughts are. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, council members like to uh, give some feedback? I just have a question. I can't remember uh, if we discussed at the last, when, when, we, when we started to put this together, if we had discussed or determined that it wasn't necessary to discuss, if we were going to continue to have the uh, option of the public comment that's emailed in and then read during the meeting, or if we, were, if we did away with that and had it be more of like, that will join the agenda packet and now the options are Zoom and in person. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Member Trent, any feedback on, yeah, okay. Uh, city Manager, you want to? Now that we are halfway through our first meeting, I do think that there's a potential other addition to this policy that we may want to consider, which is something we would need to work on with the attorneys. But um, what happens if, if the Zoom isn't working? <laughs> Uh, and it, whether or not we could incorporate that into our policy and not be forced to entirely cancel the meeting, um, but maybe be able to continue the meeting in person. So if that, if council would support something along those lines, we would have to work with the attorneys, I think, to figure out how much flexibility there is in that regard. But just as we were prepping for this, I was realizing that um, it'd be challenging, I think it'd be frustrating to, for everybody who's maybe here and prepared for the meeting if, if Zoom crashed, um, if we had to cancel. So with your permission, I'd like to add that to the final policy that we bring back next meeting, kind of delineate what happens in that situation. Yeah, I think that would be very prudent uh, to kind of anticipate, um, um, you know, when those, um, you know, uh, shutdowns will happen because, you know, the hybrid model is meant to be, a, in essence, a permanent, uh, um, ongoing um, structure. So I have a feeling it's inevitable that it's gonna happen. 
that the technology is going to either shut down for short periods or long periods. And I think anticipating that and um, knowing in advance what, how we're going to handle it, I, I think will help us get through instead of just scrambling and making decisions in the moment uh, at that time. So I, I would certainly appreciate that. Um, and I think for future councils, it would be important to have that. Um, and um, are there other, were there other feedbacks that the council members wanted to give? Um, I, and Vice Mayor Kaiser, did you have any feedback? Were you? No, because I appreciate um, staff coming together and figuring out even how to do this, because it's a way beyond my scope of understanding. So um, I appreciate it. I think um, as one of our community members spoke of earlier, it is nice to be able to have both options. I hope that people feel they can still be connected even if they're not coming to chambers. Um, so thank you, staff, for getting everything worked out where everybody can be accessible. Okay, thank you. Um, and just um, maybe a couple of thoughts I had, and, and one came up when the question of public comments on the consent agenda and realizing that the public didn't have access to the consent agenda. And so I don't know if that's a public policy issue. Um, it may be good to make note of it just so that everyone uh, is aware that that should be available. But I also wondering, um, you know, the folks who are out on Zoom, um, if they have directions and instructions how they can access the agenda or whether it's um, shared with them uh, on the screen um, in some manner. Um, and because um, they, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know that they would always have this, but if there's some way that they could pull it up, um, you know, as they're in the moment. Um, and, and so just... Um, I, I think for uh, you know just maybe future planning and uh, and trying to um, be uh, fully transparent with the public about what our agenda items are, um, and then I think the last comment I mean, and I would I know that the limitation of three council members was you know I, I think it's prudent now. Um, and it was, you know, at the time, you know, when we discussed this, it was because Omicron was actually kind of escalating um, there in the mid of the summer. Um, but to me, that that was um, for a particular, um, uh, you know, cause, which I don't know is going to persist. Um, so I would hope that that would be something that would eventually sunset out. Um, and that there be some thought about what metric do we use and to make that decision. Um, and, um, and, you know, it's really not, it's going to be up to the new council members uh, how they want to address that particular question of how many council members should be at this dais and whether this should be a permanent structure of having only three. Uh, but for the moment, you know, I think that we were doing it out of abundance of caution. Um, and we can do that, but uh, I would hope that there would be some thought to um, at some point phasing out of that. Um, so those are just my comments on our policy, but I would have to say that, you know, I, I think so far it's actually run pretty well, and I know that you guys, we didn't see what was going on behind the screen leading up to it, and I think that's a tribute to what staff has done to even get us to this point um, and to be able to incorporate the Zoom, um, um, you know, and the in-person meeting. So, um, so with that, I'll see, do council members have any other follow-ups or, yes, council member Vitran? Um, my computer doesn't seem to work very well, so the interaction with this particular program, um, I'm not too sure. Uh, it was a last minute thing, I couldn't come, so I tried to do remote. So there could be extensions, ex, you know, circumstances like that where you might even end up with four here or something like that. <clears throat> so if that's not a problem with our, you know, <coughs> policy. Well, but I, I think that, I, I mean, currently the way the policy is written, it, that would be an issue. 
And so I think that we would have to try to coordinate and plan ahead and make those uh, determinations so that, you know, we're compliant with the current policy. Um, but my just thought, I mean, I hope that we can transition out of that at some point um, and have some good, good you know, um, yeah, you know, metrics for when that would happen. Um, so, if I can make a comment on that as well. Sure. Yeah, I, you know, I don't have a problem with the idea of having all five uh, council members yeah. here at this point. I think as long as there's still the discretion for those who don't feel comfortable being here to continue to join on Zoom. Um, I, I think to your point, Mayor Story, when we were discussing this, the idea was to have only three of us with kind of some social distancing here. But I think that if all five council members are comfortable being here, then they should be able to be. But if that anyone should choose to continue to join on Zoom, that they have that opportunity either for their own health and safety concerns or if someone tests positive but is still healthy enough to join um, or feeling healthy enough to join uh, virtually. Um, but I don't, have, I don't have any issue with allowing all five council members to be here in chambers even if we wanted if if there was a consensus among council to make that change now i'd be i'd be okay with that okay um well i certainly support that feedback and thank you for that um so no if, if you're okay with that um maybe we can and yeah vice mayor uh, kaiser are you uh, comfortable with that um yeah, I mean, you're right. So maybe we could uh, incorporate that update into the policy moving forward. We can do that. Okay. After you've done all that work. <laughs> That's why we're here. <laughs> um, okay. Um, with that, I'll. Well, I, I think uh, I do not believe I asked if members of the public would like to address us on this item. Um, so I'll, I'll be sure to do that before we move on. Or is anyone from the audience want to address us? Is there anyone on Zoom that maybe want to speak on this item? I do not see any hands. I do see a hand. Pardon me. I'm going to allow you to speak. Um, Anna, you should be able to unmute yourself and then go ahead and speak. Hi, this is Anna Gage listening in. Um, I'm not sure if this is the same policy that applies, but I'm thinking of um, council candidates that would have other uh, reasons for attending meetings remotely um, for health or immune reasons. Um, that would be helpful to the future of the council as well. Okay. Well, thank you for your uh, comment, Anna. Anyone else, Chloe? I don't see anyone else with their hand up. Okay, thank you. With that, I'm going to move us on then to item E, which is to designate the voting delegates and alternates for the 2022 League of California Cities Annual Conference. Then the recommended action is to designate voting delegate and alternates if desired. In a, am I looking in the right direction? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to do this uh, verbally. So as I'm sure you're aware, the Cal City's um, 2002 annual conference is coming up in September, on September 7th through 9th, and it is in Long Beach this year. So it's really at council discretion to make a delegate, um, to, to, to determine which of you should be the voting delegate and if you'd like an alternate. So just let me know. Um, I just need some consensus on that, and I will let Cal Cities know. Thank you. Are there questions from council members on that? Yes, council member Bertrand. Um, I, I'm attending. Is anyone else attending? Not that I'm aware. Thank you. I guess I'm the delegate. <laughs> You're the lucky, the lucky one. Okay. Not, not yet. Not, yeah, yet. not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. I'm the proposed delegate. How's that? Yeah. Okay. That means you stay a lot longer at that conference. <laughs> and is there anyone willing to volunteer to be the alternate? Fly down at a moment. And, and just to clarify, you don't need an alternate unless you would like one. Okay. It's, all right. And so you, do, it's not you do need to be in person to vote. Yes. So. Okay. 
And so you, you will be there in person and will vote our interest? I purchased my... Oh, you're everything. ready to go? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, does uh, anyone in the audience wish to speak on this item? Um, seeing none, anyone on Zoom that would like to address this item? I'll bring it back. Um, is there, let's see, um, I think we need, um, do we need a motion on this? Does it, do, do we need a motion on this? Why don't phone? we do that just to make sure that the lead, just, I know that the lead okay. does want so the cities to designate who it is. Okay. So is there a motion? I'll make a motion, uh, motion to appoint Councilmember Bertrand as our designated voting delegate at the League of California Cities Annual Conference. Is there a second? I can second that. Okay, there's a motion by Councilmember Brown and seconded by Vice Mayor Kaiser. Um, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. And Mayor Story. Aye. Thank you. We expect a full report back on what happened there. Um, I usually give reports but to people of interest. <laughs> So if you want a verbal report here, I'll be glad to do that. Um, no, that'd be nice. Mm. Yeah. Um, so now we actually move to item uh, F, which is the, um, um, well, in-person council attendance um, is the determination of which council members will attend the next regularly scheduled council meeting in person and remotely. But I believe with the action that we just took, that that makes that item moot. I think that's correct. Do council members agree with that? Uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser? To clarify, though, the council members still have the, alt the option to join virtually. Yeah. They're not required to come in person. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'll be here either no, way. No, 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 yes. <laughs> um, so our, our, does any member of the public wish to speak on this particular item? Any member in uh, on Zoom which should speak on this? Mayor, I think we have a member of the public that wants to speak. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, please step up. Um, I just um, wanted to mention that it sounds like you'll have to agree that three of you will show up, right? Because there's a minimum of three, isn't there? Yeah, so that's... So you would That's still great. need to agree on who is going to come, but not. So it's kind of a similar process. Good point. Right. I don't believe that we actually do need to have three in the room, unless the no. council wants that to be a minimum. Um, oh, we, well, what, no. I thought there was a minimum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Not, not currently right now under the emergency order that we're operating under. It says uh, at least one and no more than three. I oh, think, that's what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Good point. No. no, you know, there's a standing expectation that all council members are in attendance, either here personally or in Zoom right. at council meetings. Um, and so, and this particular action was really prompted by, you know, we had uh, previously determined that we only wanted three here in person but those were because of COVID concerns. Um, and so, you know, with the action that we just took to eliminate that and allow four or five or all of us to be here, if we so choose, I mean, but some could still be on Zoom, but they would be allowed to be more than three here in person. So that, that was, uh, you know, the point of that particular agenda item. Uh, so, okay. Thanks for clarifying. You're welcome. Um, okay, so I don't think we need to take any action on, on that item considering the preceding um, action that we took on the policy, um, which we now brings us to um, the um, consent item um, that was pulled um, by myself. Um, that was consent item D, which is now regular item G, which is the banner policy. Um, 
And maybe just not to uh, belabor the point, but the reason I pulled it in because um, in my it, one I, in my reading of the policy, um, and I guess it, it my reading of it. And tell me if my interpretation is wrong. Would no longer allow certain nonprofit groups, such as the Wharf the Wharf um, or the um, Capitola SoCal Chamber, who puts on the Art and Wine Festival, to be able to use the banners to advertise their events. So the changes that are proposed to the banner policy. Um, Previously, there was a lot of language in there that was maybe open to interpretation, and it talked about how the banners could be used for public information campaigns, and it wasn't necessarily clear who could do that. So the proposed change to the banner policy is to really true it up with best practice, and what it will effectively do is limit the banners to two groups. Number one is those who are holding special events with significant impacts in the community, which would include the two uh, both the Art and Wine Festival as well as the Wharf to Wharf. Those are certainly major special events in the community, so they would continue to be able to do banners. And then in addition, public agency information campaigns. So for example, Learn to Read Week, or if the school district wanted to advertise that now is the time to sign your kid up for kindergarten, um, or RTC had a Street Smarts campaign it would be available for those two things. So really it's about community notification for coming events and then public agency information campaigns. And as pointed out in the staff report, staff went back and reviewed seven years worth of banners and really all of the banners that were hung over that seven year period fit in one of those two buckets. Okay, I, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, and that's good. And maybe I um, you know, um, misunderstood it. But I just want to clarify, in, in reading uh, the actual am, uh, amended administrative policy, uh, the, the phrase nonprofit groups um, is stricken, and it just says public agency may display street banners for community events and public information campaigns. Um, and that's just the fact that we struck nonprofit groups from the policy would mean that that the interpretation is that of that is that you know uh, independent nonprofits could not advertise their events. So, I put and this that, is under Section Three specifications. Correct. I believe I have the specific language up on the screen, and my intent and our intent behind that is is that there's two types of banners. There's public agency banners, which are the educational street banners for community events, public information campaigns, and then period separate approved special events that have significant impacts in the community may also display informational street banners. So there's essentially two classes of banners. There's the educational street banners and then there's the informational street banners. Informational street banners are for the special events and then the educational street banners are for the public agency, um, for public agencies, for community events, public information campaigns. We can clar we could clarify that uh, if if um, council would like, but that is certainly the intent is is that there's these two classes, and then we go in further here to talk a little bit more about informational street banners for special events may only include the event name, date, and time, and then those banners may be enhanced by the addition of applicable graphics related to the event as approved. We can certainly clarify that point uh, to make it 100% clear that approved special events. Yeah, I, I would. I by mean, anybody. Right. Or whether it can be, I wasn't necessarily going so far to say anybody, but if they're nonprofits who have approved permits would be able to advertise on the banners. So. Yes, as well as for profits. For example, we have the oh, Capitola yes. Marathon, which is put on, right, or the right. Mermaid, okay. I believe. Those are for profit entities that put those on. The, really, the intent behind the informational street banners is to let folks know that something is happening in the village. Um, it's not intended to be an advertising vehicle or to right. thank sponsors, which sometimes we have seen from the banners, but it's really to let people know hey, something is happening in the village this weekend. Okay. 
Well, I, I think it would be helpful to clarify that nonprofits and for profits may be able to use them for, um, you know, approved special events. Um, you know, since, you know, kind of in the first sentence, we've stricken them, you know, from that part. Understood. Um, and so having some clarification on that. Um, I don't know if co other council members have any input on that or thoughts. I mean, uh, uh, yes, council member Bertrand. Yeah, I, I had some issues with that too, and then I had to read it over a couple times to sort of get to, I think, where Jamie is emphasizing. Um, but I do have a question. So when another organization comes to us, whether it's for profit or non profit, to apply to be a special event, we approve that, correct? That's correct. There's two types of special events. The minor special events, which are approved at a staff level. It would be rare that a minor special event would have significant impacts on the community and would need a banner, um, but it's possible. And then major special events, which by definition have significant impacts on the community. New major special events are approved by the city council, and then recurring major special events can be re can be reapproved by staff on an annual basis, provided there weren't significant impacts um, the prior year. Okay, so once we make that approval, they do have the option of doing a banner. That's correct. The fee, the, basically, when the city issues, the police department issues a special event, let's just say, or the city council issues a special event for a bike race in town, with that approval would come the ability to hang a banner in advance of the event. Okay, so even for a minor, they have that possibility. The language here is for, for, for special events that have a significant impact on the community. And so, for example... Um, well, Wharf to Wharf, okay. Wharf to Wharf is a major. It has significant impacts, okay. clearly. But yeah. even a minor one, I mean, would, you know, it might be beneficial for them to get a, a banner. I don't know that we've ever done this, but... Like I said, the intent here is really to let the community know that something is happening and sort of alert them. Yeah. Um, it, it's, they're really not intended to be sort of advertising, because if we get into the business of sort of advertising these events, then the question becomes, is it commercial, is it not commercial? So, for example, if someone came to us with a, a special event, a minor special event, let's just say it's, it's a paddle out. Um, I'm not exactly sure what sort of community notification would be needed if, if there was a paddle out that was taking place on a Sunday morning, okay. for example. Any other questions or comments on the policy? Do any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Um, any members on Zoom wish to comment on this item? Mayor Story, I do not see any hands raised at this time. Okay, thank you. So this, I'll bring it back for, yes. So this would come back to us with that clarification, or can we put it in now? That, that's my question. It's certainly at your discretion. If the motion was to approve it with clarification that the SCP banners are allowed for SCPs that are run by nonprofits or for profits, we can make that change. If you'd like it to come back, we can do that as well. Well, I, I think it would be appropriate just to include that uh, modification in our action and then let staff run with it. So, yeah. so um, council member would like to take uh, make a motion on this item. We do need uh, uh, an approval. I'll move to approve the over the street banner policy update with the recommended uh, modifications. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And the motion passes unanimously, which would brings us to adjournment this evening. And so I will adjourn this meeting of the Capitola City Council to our next regularly scheduled meeting on September the 8th at 7 p.m. Uh, in these city hall chambers and on a computer near you. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, staff, very much uh, for pulling this together. Um, I, I think it went mostly very well. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, so. are, are we off recording now? <laughs> and, uh, off of Zoom? Okay, yes. well, the fat is taking bets on how many of All us show up. Five or three or two, whatever. Yeah. <laughs>